Hello, how are you? Christy Lemire, a really old friend of ours, David Park, is joining us today. Salutations. For, yes, for our um, little wine the flick thing, which is still in progress. We're at the Arc Light. We just saw Happy Death Day. So first of all, what are you drinking? I have no idea what this is. This is uh, what I have to call, or has been christened uh, unto me, a Dave Park special, or David Park special. Okay. Uh, it is a vodka soda and a splash of bitters. Ooh. So it's taking a, it's it's like a variation on a a, a, a classic. It's sort of taking a, a a bland drink and giving it some some verve, some zest, some what have you. You too are a variation on a classic. Hey, thank you. Thank you. And yeah. I'm having just random Cabernet. Yeah. I'm worth the ArcLight in Hollywood. Matt Ashley is behind the camera again. Hello. Drinking white Russian. That's his drink. And we just saw Happy Death Day. There you go. Which was fun. Which um, mm -hmm. if you saw Before I Fall a year ago. Okay, so this is the same exact movie, but in high school. It's a girl who is like vapid and kind of bitchy. She has all mean girlfriends, and she realizes that when she has to live the same day over and over again. But in that, she dies in a car crash. Uh -huh. And then as time goes on, she realizes, okay, I can tweak my day. I can try to prevent this death. I can eventually become better. And there's a nice, cute, kind of slightly nerdy guy who helps her navigate that as there is here. It's the exact same movie. But in high school. Let me ask you this: Did it yeah. have the same? Did it lean into the comedy like this movie did? Yes. It, it, it did in the same way. Yeah. Which of these two would you say succeeded, or were they on par with each oh, other? Good question. They're very similar because a lot of it is they have both have really likable lead actresses. Okay. And Zoe Joy starred in the first one. I'm totally blanking on the name of the girl who stars in this one. Something Roth, Jessica Roth. I'm going to look it up while we talk. Do it. <laughs> uh, things that I did what like. Do you think? About, yeah. Uh, things I, I liked about this movie is it. Jessica Roth. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It, it did have a lot of uh, twists and turns, narrative shifts. It took me places that I didn't expect. Uh, there were some MacGuffins in there that, uh, that at first I was like, come on now. We got a, a you know, a deus uh, ex maschina in this Ooh, case, because there's a mask. Nicely done. And, there, and there's a ridiculous, like, <laughs> let's just call it out for what it is. Like, I don't know what college would have this kind of a mascot. It's like this weird cherubic <laughs> terror baby is their mascot. Like, maybe I missed the reference to what it is, but it's supposed. Is it like a like a snow baby? Like what the <laughs> yes, hell was it two. supposed to be? So like Ohio State, their mascot is a buckeye, right? And it's that's like, not a baby buck, though. No, but Bucky the buckeye is kind of creepy looking with the big weird head. But right? isn't that like an animal? I guess. This is a baby. This is a full on it's, yeah. baby with Maybe big buck teeth. Perhaps they lose a lot. And <laughs> I, well, I, I don't want to spoil any any anything, but there are like I don't know. There's just a lot of like creepy characters is one character who looks like a cross between like Viggo Mortensen and Bob from Twin Peaks <laughs> who comes out of nowhere and then there's another character who looks like the creepy baby but like what I did like about it was it kept me guessing like I enjoyed that um, because you know so many movies you can kind of get two steps ahead of it and I, I like that aspect of it um, things I didn't like was like the shifts in, in, in the gears like there were moments where I'm like okay now we're getting into comedic territory they're leading into that and then it was like oh now we're back into horror now we're back into comedy it was a good balance i think overall what did you think it's a tough wire to walk right mm -hmm. to go between like the serious scares and then the comedy and by the end you have to have mm -hmm. redemption they're so hard. there was just some parkour going on behind Sweet. us it was very distracting whatever you want to do at the arc light <laughs> you can do it <laughs> I'm not, I'm not there, there are around. giant boulders like giant fake boulders and what are you going to do on them besides parkour <laughs> but they're four. Um, so no it's it, and then there's like redemption and forgiveness and like you know self-acceptance of like I, I've been a bitch my whole life how do I fix this and it's a, a tough, tough tricky balance to find right? and all of these movies kind yes. of do that right I mean uh, Groundhog Day Day After Tomorrow they all like I mean obviously Day After Tomorrow being more of an of an action version of that but even that came to a, a point in, in the structure of that movie where they leaned into the comedic understanding where there was like a montage series where Tom Cruise begins to understand the power that he has and he walks through the motions of it and it's is kind of in aware. charge of all of it. Yes. Edge of Tomorrow. Sorry, Edge sorry, tomorrow. thank you, thank Which you. Which now they're calling Live, Die, Repeat. You know, they, they changed the name oh, of it. Oh, right, right, right. When they released it on DVD, it's called Live, Die, Repeat. Edge of Tomorrow. Right, whatever you sorry. want to call right. it. Editorial note. Day After Tomorrow is the Jake Gyllenhaal yes, weather movie. Yes, yes. Not is, to be confused with Geostorm, right. which is like apparently <laughs> right. just a remake version of Welcome that. Welcome to Wine the Flip. Or yes. 2012, because <laughs> global warming is real. <laughs> yes. Uh, but no, like I, like, I, I, I was uh, surprised pleasantly by this movie and how much I did enjoy it. Um, there, but the peripheral characters were kind of like... 
weak sauce. It is all about her at the end of the day. Her which is, journey. Yeah. yeah, but like she was, she ended up being stronger than I thought she would be. Uh, so what do you think? I mean, do you think, did you expect her to uh, be a stronger protagonist than she ended up uh, becoming? Uh, that's not hopefully giving enough or yeah. anything away. Well, she has to have this journey of self-discovery where she realizes she's been vapid and bitchy her whole life and something's mm -hmm. got to change. And only when she makes that change can she overcome what's happening to her. You know that has to happen. She's really likable, and that makes a big difference as far as whether or not you care if she makes this you know, discovery about herself. Yeah, no, I, I liked it. It's fun. It moves really well. It's edited really well. It's, um, it's a Blumhouse movie, and they have covered like a wide spectrum of horror films from like they do all those conjuring movies yeah yeah they I mean they just a million kind of different horror movies this is like yeah a comedic a comedic horror movie i would call this but i also want you to care i gotta say i got a serious problem with this movie though because it's a serious slam <laughs> on my sorority you had a vocal reaction oh my god very big like, vocal out reaction out of nowhere so the, the house she's in is totally fake it's like kappa pi lambda it's yeah. not real but then in the beginning, where she's still a bitch, she makes some comment about not those heifers from Delta Gamma. I'm like, oh no, she did not. <laughs> yeah, and you said, and then, but then you followed up with, "That's my house." That's my house, and I'll kill her myself if I have to. But then she sees the light. Yeah. So now I want her to live. If you could repeat <laughs> your going through seeing that movie again, would you say that out loud and blurt it out yes. in front of the whole theater? Yes, because oh, my friends, we all sit in the same place in the back of the theater, and we're all. <laughs> Fair enough. How often you get the, t the chance to like yell at the screen, right? A horror movie wants you to yell at the screen. Well, that's why. I, not? No, I agree, and I, that's part of the reason why I love horror movies. And you know, a lot. Some people. I read this recently because my my mom and like the rest of my family hates horror movies, and I love them. And, and this theory that like people that like horror movies enjoy transferring their anxiety to the characters on screen. Yeah. And it's cathartic somehow, it, Yeah, right? that it's yeah. all about like, well, I'm, I'm holier than thou or smarter than them. And all of a sudden, like, you know, the transference of anxiety to these characters uh, makes me feel at ease with myself. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, like, what do you, first of all, what do you call the, this, like, subgenre of movies <laughs> where people repeat themselves over and over and over again? And second of all, why do they lend themselves to, like death so much you know because like in both <laughs> why must you die yeah like in all these movies yeah. it's even if it's a comedy like Groundhog Day it's like the inevitability of death presents itself and then how do I like triumph over it or use death as a tool we all want the do-over right we all screw up we all wanted the chance to like be witty and pithy or quippy in the moment yeah and so this this movie lets you experience that through them I guess yeah so I guess right? genre is a really good or action yeah. is a really good you know, uh, uh, they're, they're both good genres for yes. this subgenre or this kind of whatever that narrative. Too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But it's a, it's it, like you're saying, it's a tightrope act, mm -hmm. and I think that ultimately this one pulled it off. Okay. So should folks go see this? I would say yes, because it's got zero marketing that I've seen so far. There's lots of posters all over LA with giant cakes with the knife in them, and we did not get any cake tonight. Or, or knives, and hopefully we won't on um, the walk. There's no knife or a cake. Or know. creepy baby masks. I, out, of the, out of those three things, <laughs> I only want one, and you can probably guess which of those three things I would okay. want. So how do we find you in the world? You have a podcast you just launched. Yeah, don't. Uh, you can give me cake. Don't give me a knife <laughs> or a baby mask. Cake no. or death. <laughs> yeah. Tea, cake, or death. We choose cake. Uh, you, can, you can find me uh, at... I don't really go on Twitter that much, but I am at, at David Pavid on Instagram at Deep Park Chopra. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I have a podcast, it's called The Lusty Horde. Uh, we have launched uh, our first episode. It is a uh, horror fantasy sci-fi podcast. It's more of a, a radio play of sorts. We are performing this Friday, the 13th, <laughs> at, the, uh, at the West Side Comedy Theater as part of the West Side Comedy Festival. Uh, and then Dr. God is also another comedy group I perform with the first and third Saturdays of every month right down the street here in Hollywood at I.O. West. You can also see a horror movie that I co-wrote and uh, I'm also in called Blood Sucking Bastards with Narcos Pedro Pascal and uh, Joel Murray from Mad Men. Yeah, that is on demand and on Showtime and movie channel all the time. So check that out, Blood Sucking Bastards. Uh, <laughs> and that's enough plugs for one day. And I know you again how. 
Because you work with my husband. Because I worked with your husband for like <laughs> six years as a writer and a producer. There you go. Right down the street here uh, at, at a certain network that will go unnamed. And we all turned out fine. Mm -hmm. So More thank you, thank you. Go see it. Happy Death Day. Go thank, see it. Go yes, see it. I would say go see it. Thank you for joining me. Thank yes. you for drinking with me. Good thank to you see for you. having me. Good to see you too. Cheers.